Good morning, folks. Not a bad article on how comets might have seeded life on Earth. You might have seen a few articles like this recently, and I can't help but consider the comets coming close to Mars this year and next. In the January 1st, 2013 news, we broke down Comet Ison. Might be a dud, but if not, could be a bright blue light next to the red planet for almost two whole months this fall, before passing only two million miles above it. If you see the February 2nd, 2013 news, we broke down Comet Siding Spring. Going to be more than 10 times closer to Mars than Ison, they are not certain it's going to miss. We'll keep these things updated as the dates draw near. Giant wave off the coast of Mexico dragged two people out to sea, one has died. This is a significant quake swarm. This many fours and fives is highly unusual for one location, especially south of Africa. It's the fifth uptick signal this watch we can't count because it doesn't hit the rubric. But we did have a five pointer in Nepal and a tremor in Taiwan set off readings for hundreds of miles and hit the six magnitude mark on two sensors. Interesting article here on how we may be seeing more sinkholes in Florida in the coming weeks. Better article, but not for the content, for the example of mainstream media pandering to the anthropogenic global warming idea. The CO2 curve matched the temperature curve perfectly for hundreds of thousands of years, and then humans began messing with the equilibrium, and veteran observers know that the temperature has not followed the CO2 curve as well as they'd like us to believe, and that recent warming trends, while very real, are nowhere close to matching the United Nations estimates. 18-day gamma burst drought ended a few hours ago just south of the celestial equator in the Shield constellation. Bartol is at it again, woke up with major interruption in cosmic rays, approximately 45 minutes later it was changed significantly, only to be changed once more. Usually we see this kind of thing with incoming interplanetary shock waves, haven't taken a hit yet, but the solar wind speed and density are beginning to rise. Magnetic stability called slightly into question here. A quick word about this, nothing is actually monitoring field lines, it is a guess based on solar wind. The same data that you see here, this is the same data that is interpreted to make this. It's all from the ACE. Now that means the alleged magnetopause reversal was actually an event interpreted by the satellite as backward solar wind. It does not mean it was not a real event, it just means that it probably wasn't a magnetosphere reversal. I do happen to think that Lance over at the United Knowledge might be onto something with an energy source around the next few days to weeks. We do differ slightly in our conclusions about the cause. The gong shows umbral fields, still hiding the back side of that green coronal opening. The earth facing holes are easy to spot but it is more difficult to see the transequatorial piece turning in from the left. When we place the field lines atop the SDO, might explain that, the charged particles caught in these fields would obscure visibility of incoming coronal holes. Sunspots had a brief moment of building before exhaling and relaxing yesterday. The most complex region facing Earth is well divided magnetically. There is still a lot going on. Quake watch will end in four days. Let's hope that Russian uptick is all we'll get. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.